Thanks for joining everybody. My name is Stacy Potter. I'm a community manager here at Weaveworks. It's great to see everyone in the chat. Let us know where you're healing from and uh, what problems you're trying to solve with GitOps uh, today in the chat. Hopefully you're here to hear from Kingdon. Uh, he is my colleague and open source support engineer here at Weaveworks. Uh, and he'll be walking you through GitOps with GitHub Actions and Flux. If you're brand new to our various Weaveworks or GitOps talks, or series, uh, welcome. And if you've been coming to these sessions for a while, uh, welcome back. So a little bit about the uh, company that Kingdon and I work for. If this is your first time coming to one of these events, then that uh, we've been running for a little bit here. Uh, the company that we work for is called Weaveworks. <clears throat> if you haven't heard of us, we're a startup with offices all over the world uh, in San Francisco, New York, London, Berlin, as well as distributed and remote teams across the globe. A lot of uh, what we do is based on open source. You may have heard of the projects Flux and Flagger, which are in the CNCF as incubating projects. And we're in the process of submitting the application to graduate uh, right now. So hopefully Flux will be a graduated project soon enough. Uh, Flux was also the project that really kicked off the term uh, that our CEO Alexis Richardson, Alexis Richardson coined, uh, which is GitOps, and it's really been cool to watch uh, watch that the whole space spread. Uh, and GitOps is just, you know, really come into its own, and the community has grown so much over the last few years, and it's been really neat to be a part of it. So much so that um, large organizations like Amazon Web Services and Microsoft and others have adopted Flux and GitOps. Uh, but specifically Flux under the hood to offer GitOps to their customers. If you missed GitOps, the GitOps one-stop shop that we had uh, event that we had back in October of last year, you can find the playlist on YouTube and I can paste it in the chat as well um, and see how all of these different vendors have actually integrated Flux into their products. Cortex is another one of our projects that is in the CNCF. Uh, it helps make Prometheus scalable. And I mentioned that because Prometheus is a key part of the progressive delivery possibilities with Flagger. So that's a key option that we have there. Um, and of course, the other projects that we have, we've Ignite, EKS Cuddle, or Control. Uh, and now we've GitOps, which is also a free and open source tool that provides GitOps for your various needs and has a UI on top of Flux. Um, and we have many more. So if you're interested, definitely check us out on GitHub under Weaveworks, as well as the CNCF, where you can find our projects and learn about more about us. Uh, you can always visit our website at weave.works. So a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we've bookmarked one hour for today's session, and I'm sure I don't have to explain Zoom to too many people these days, but the one thing I will note is um, if you are pasting copying or texting or anything in the chat with us, like we'll take all questions in the chat function of Zoom. Um, and when you do ask a question or make a comment, just please change the two to everyone so that everyone can see that unless you have something super private, which is fine too. Otherwise I'll just copy and paste and I'll be monitoring the questions um, on behalf of Kingdon, but I know Kingdon has a lot to jam into this session. So I wanna make sure that he gets through everything. So I'll just, hold off and if there's a good place to, where you're pausing Kingdon, I'll, I'll come in and ask you questions then. Otherwise I'll save questions till the end. Um, so uh, a bit on how to get connected to us and the Flux community here, uh, visit the website at fluxcd.io to learn more. And if you make your way over to GitHub, give us a star and check out the discussions um, in the Q and A there, there as well. There's lots of great FAQs and Q and A section uh, for you to chat with folks. Uh, the Flux team, of course, is on the CNCF Slack under the hashtag Flux channel. And if you need an invite, I will drop all of these uh, links into the chat in just a bit. And we have a ton of talks booked for the spring session of our Weave online user group. So please come back and join us for all these great sessions. Um, next week, we have two sessions. So policy management and GitOps. We've just acquired Magalix, who's a great company. Um, and we have them on on the first, which is Tuesday. And then the following day, Max uh, Werner from uh, D2IQ will be uh, talking to us about managing thousands of clusters and their workloads with Flux. So definitely come back and check, it, check those sessions out. With that, I think I'm done. So <laughs> Kingdon, I will pass it over to you and I'm gonna go ahead and just continue sharing slides, but I'll let you talk to them and turn off my camera.
Oh, you're on mute still, Kingdon. Awesome. Thank you, <laughs> you so go. much for that wonderful introduction, Stacey. Uh, and thanks everyone for joining us here today. Um, I'm Kingdon. I'm an open source support engineer at Weaveworks. Uh, you can find me in the Flux channel on the CNCF Slack uh, pretty much all the time. I'm a Flux maintainer. And uh, I'm a cow on the internet, if that's me. Um, let's save the next slide here. OK, so uh, you have may or may not have been to one of our talks before. I'm going to keep the intro to GitOps really brief this time uh, because we've covered it a lot of times before. Uh, these are the GitOps principles, as uh, it looks like it got cut off, but this is opengitops.dev. This is a, a neutral uh, working group that has uh, input from various companies, including Weaveworks, that uh, was used to define GitOps in a neutral way. Uh, so if you know about Kubernetes, you know about declarative resources already. Um, and if you know about Git, you know about versioned and immutable storage. So the one that actually differs, if you've used Git to store configs before, uh, like many people probably have, I think that's a great place to start with GitOps. But what makes GitOps different in particular is actually this number three and number four. Uh, number three is an agent that runs inside of the cluster, and that is Flux. Uh, the agent pulls configuration from the Git repository into the cluster and then applies it from there. And this is different than your traditional CI systems that push configuration from CI to production. The CI system has right access to production. This is a different paradigm. Um, and uh, continuously reconciling means because these are declarative definitions, we can apply them every five minutes if we want, uh, every one minute, and they should have no effect on the cluster unless something has drifted. And if we want, uh, if we see a drift, we'd like it to be corrected. So. That's also part of GitOps, continuously reconciled. Uh, so go to the next slide. So I gave you kind of a, a high level overview, um, a little bit more nuts and bolts, the actual moving parts in Flux that do this job. Uh, they are microservice oriented. So there's a Git repository. Um, if you're familiar with Kubernetes controllers or operators, that's what we're doing here. We've defined some custom resources, a Git repository and a customization. Uh, and what those do are just what I just described. The Git repository goes out to the Git repo, remote, wherever it is, pulls the latest version of the manifests into the cluster, and then holds them there, waits for the customization to come along, ask for them, and that customization applies them to the cluster. Um, there are some more moving parts that we'll get into as we go on. Um, I want to talk about Flux's core feature set first, which includes some automation. Um, there are various different ways to do this automation, and that is the main topic of today. So uh, maybe to beat a dead horse a little bit, but uh, Git as a single source of truth is kind of central to the paradigm. Uh, if it's not already clear from how I describe GitOps, what we really like is for all of our configuration to live in this Git repository so that we can go there and refer to it at any time to know the state of the cluster with some degree of confidence. And there are lots of things you can do to increase that confidence. Uh, some of them are outside of the scope of today, but uh, we'll see a few as well as we go into the demo. So uh, two more moving parts besides the Git repository and the customization uh, or if we want to go uh, and describe the GitOps toolkit, which is actually a little bit closer to what Flux is composed of, a uh, bunch of controllers that are each separately responsible in a microservice way for their own uh, API. So these controllers are responsible for the image API, which is part of the automation features of Flux. Uh, image Reflector goes out and finds the latest version of the image according to a policy that you define. And uh, image automation controller, well, image reflector controller reflects all of the images. It doesn't discriminate. Image policy uh, and image automation controller then read that, similar to customization reading Git repository, and use that to decide what version should be installed based on your directives. Uh, then it pushes that update to a branch. So um, we'll see that. 
in our demo uh, several times. And actually we should get started as quick as we can because a few of these things take five minutes. Uh, we'll see uh, Git repository uh, automation as well. Uh, that does not take five minutes. And we'll see the Helm repository Samver automation uh, demonstrated as well. Um, if those things are not clear, um, don't worry. I, I just want to give an overview to the people who uh, are um, more familiar with Flux already so that they know what to expect. Um, the, if we have time, there's one more example where we'll show a customization um, that applies a Helm repository with some other configuration in Git that is a little bit more advanced. Um, we may or may not have time to get there, but we've got at least five examples that I think we can cover in the next 30 minutes. Uh, oh, before we get started, caching is a super hard problem. In principle, it is easy to solve. Uh, I tried to solve caching a number of times prior to this demo, and I have decided uh, it is too difficult with all of the other things that we want to present. So it's not part of this demo. Uh, so if we go to the next slide, um, we might do a demo later on caching. Uh, kind of want to express the idea that Flux puts a hard line between CI and CD uh, to drive the point home even further. Uh, caching and building the image is part of the CI's responsibility. So that's something we'll see demoed here is the GitHub Actions job that does build and push an image uh, or release an image, as we'll say. Um, but the approach that we're going to use does not solve or attempt to solve caching. And if you want to iterate fast, then you will want to solve that problem. Uh, for me, I really wanted to show how PodInfo uh, or Flux as well, uh, how any application uh, written in Go can be built into a multi-arch image. Uh, since that's one of the core features of Flux is multiple architecture support. Flux is multi-everything, uh, multi-cluster, multi-tenant. Don't let anyone tell you different. Um, multi-repository, all of these things uh, are meant to scale in Flux. So Flux is designed to scale. That's part of the microservice architecture. So let's move on to the next slide. So what we're going to see first, uh, I'm calling it naive image automation. This is not a term that we use in the documentation, um, but to explain what I mean by that, uh, naive image automation is a simple automation that takes a manifest that has an image uh, field somewhere in it, maybe image or tag, and it updates that based on a policy. Uh, it does not do any go out and fetch the latest version of the manifest. It is not really a tool for atomic releases unless you um, make it one. Uh, we'll see how you can do that here, and it's not really uh, too difficult. Um, but uh, Generally, the sense I want to get across is that when we're tagging an image release, we're not just telling CI to go out and build a new image. We're saying something about the state of our application. And if we publish uh, an image as a release, then that should mean that uh, the source is um, coherent at that point. So that's where you can put your manifest updates. We'll see that in example four or five. I'm not sure which, but uh, let's get started and see what we have on the next slide here. Ah, yeah. So we'll come back to that, um, but I think I'm ready to share my screen now here. Great. Okay. So I have this demo link. Uh, if you can see my screen, hopefully, I don't have the border around it, but I think we're good. Yes, we can see it. Wonderful. Um, this is the GitHub Actions demo repository, and I'll put this in the chat. Uh, here. If anyone wants to follow along, you're certainly welcome to. Um, I'm not going to stop for questions as we go through. Uh, like I said, there are a couple of places where, um, here's the meetup link, where we will have natural waits and we can address questions at those points if we have a chance. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is get Flux installed. Um, so back up, the very first thing we want to do is get a Kubernetes cluster. I have created one here uh, with uh, K3S with uh, Rancher Desktop, just a local test cluster. You can use any cluster for this. Um, and I believe I want, uh, let's see, 
delete some things. You can, this is a new UI. I'm uh, maybe not new for some of you. A lot of people have probably seen this in demos before, but I'm new at this. So please bear with me while I uh, navigate around K9S. I think it's a really nice uh, way to see what's happening on your cluster. So hopefully we can spend less time um, running commands, trying to find things. It's just a nice UI. So first we're gonna install Flux. I've got a variable set, GitHub user, and I have a, a GitHub token stashed here. That's just a script that retrieves my GitHub token for me. I'm going to export it. Um, by the way, if uh, these things are really foreign to you, there are some helpful links down here that are a better place to get started. This is at least an intermediate, probably an advanced demo. So if you're getting started, it's going to be a little bit fast paced, but hopefully everyone can follow it and uh, we'll have a good time. So uh, about Bootstrap and what Bootstrap does, this installs Flux onto the cluster in a way that Flux is managing itself. Uh, so we said Git is the single source of truth. That means what Flux does is it puts its own defi definition into Git and then applies it from there. Um, and you'll do a similar thing when you use Flux. Uh, so what we should see is actually we've got those uh, controllers coming up now, all of those controllers for Flux system. Uh, looks like we're good to go. And Flux is reporting back all components are healthy too. So that's good, we're ready to start. Um, you see something is happening already. Okay, we've got error image pull. Uh, that's fine, that's expected. We haven't pushed an image yet. This is part of the demo. Okay, so um, what we're going to do first is behind this link, uh, there's a link to the examples. So you can follow along uh, later on your own if you want, or as we go through. And what I'll explain here is this is the naive dev automation. Uh, what I will say about that is we would like to deploy the latest image. Uh, whatever the latest image is we've built, uh, we have a dev environment. We've put it in the uh, example one namespace and that's where we'll do our latest deploys. So let's find pod info. Uh, I have a pod info repository that's been forked uh, and I've prepared a couple of examples in here. So the meaty parts of this are under GitHub workflows. And actually there's a readme in here as well that I've added for this demo. So the original credit for all of these examples goes to the pod info um, repo, the original Stefan Pradhan pod info repo. Um, and these are some great examples that are a little bit more in depth than we have time to cover today. Uh, but the one that we're going to work on is derived from this. So it's a release workflow. Uh, there are two copies. They're almost identical. If you want to go and read them, um, we'll have a chance to look at them as we go on. But we are going to uh, use the dev one right now. All we have to do is push a commit to any branch except for main, and that will create uh, an image. So let's do that. So I've got a branch going here called revert something or other. Let's make sure we have the latest and uh, let's just merge some commits here. So we're not really making any changes here. We just want to, uh, let's see what shape this is in. Yep, take the latest commit and merge it in. Uh, so there's a build that will be triggered when we push this branch. And we can go see that in the actions here. It started there. So like I said, there are other workflows in here and you can see some of them run when a branch is pushed or when a pull request is opened. Uh, they're great examples to follow. This is the one that we're focused on right now and it's building. You see uh, one of the actions is called uh, publish multi arch image. So this is where 
I tried to cache and I got stuck. I realized that uh, building a multi-arch image is a little bit more complicated than just building a regular binary. Uh, I found some great caching examples that did not have anything to do with multi-arch. They were no help at all. Um, if you don't need multi-arch, caching is actually not that difficult to set up correctly uh, these days, uh, but I recommend you find a good example. Anyway, what we see here is it's building an image and it's going to take a moment, um, but uh, what we should do now is look at the flux resources in the example one namespace. So let's switch namespaces to example one and let's look at image repositories. Uh, since we've created an image repository in here, you can go ahead and find it. So this tells us something about the state of the image repository. It says that it scanned and it found 13 tags. And you can see those tags uh, here where they have been published. The reason that one of these isn't already deployed is because we haven't given our automation a write secret yet. It needs to be able to write back to the repository. So if we look at uh, image policies, we'll see there is a policy and it's selected an image. Uh, it is a latest image from an hour ago. And in a moment, we'll see it select the new one when that's finished. Uh, but if we switch to image update, so these are the three resources to know in the Flux image API. You see, this one doesn't have any information. We can go down and look at the status to see, uh -huh, it says there's an error. Auth secret, flux system not found. So there's a readme for this. And it tells us what to do. Um, you will want to substitute your own name in here, of course, but this is flux create secret. And this is uh, something that flux will also do as part of the bootstrap process. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this before I try to explain so that we can watch things happen. Uh, it's going to create a deploy key. The private key is in the cluster. This is a public key. There is no risk uh, having this on a live stream. And I'm going to go into the repo settings, deploy keys, and add a deploy key. Um, I'm in the wrong repo for this. OK. So this is my application repo. I want to be in my configuration repo. Uh, we'll explain about that if there are questions. Um, but first, let's get to where I was going. OK, deploy keys. And we want to add a deploy key. It's going to replace this one that we've deleted. So we'll use this name again. And we do want to give it right access. Uh, this is the updater. So it's looking for images. And as it finds a new image, it should make a commit in the Git repo that tells Flux that's the image to deploy now. And we should see that relatively quickly now that the secret is connected. Uh, once we do, it'll be about 15 seconds the way I have this set up. The interval is configurable. All of the intervals are configurable for all of the things that work on a cycle and observe something outside of the cluster. So it looks like we had a successful run. Let's see what happened. OK, we got to git commit. What happened? This is the file. So. Uh, here we go. So this is our customization. This is a SIG CLI customized overlay. It lists out some resources to install. Uh, we've seen some of these already, the Git repository, the image repository, the policy. This is the policy uh, that defines here. It's named dev policy. These are all in the namespace example one. And uh, another copy of the Git repository that's connected to that read write secret that we just created. Uh, then the bulk of the commits are from this branch. Uh, so it's pointed at a specific branch. 
um, and a folder where there is a customized overlay like this one, uh, but with more specific details about deployment and service and horizontal pod autoscaler and whatever else is defined by your application. So let's go to pods here. And let's see, we do have a new image that started and it's running and it's not ready yet. Let's see how we can find out uh, what that's serving. It's, I did create an ingress for it. Okay, so it's alive and there's an ingress here called ex one pod info. I have a hosts entry here so we can get to this. Uh, this is Rancher desktop, makes things really easy. Um, so I don't have to do a port forwarding. All right, so here's our app. It's deployed from the image that we just built. And we'd like to prove it uh, by changing something and building another image. So let's make uh, beta three. Let's see, let's look at pods again. All right, so what we're gonna do to make beta three, we're not gonna change anything in the config repository. We're just going to update the source. There's a declaration here in this version file. It says beta two. Actually, why don't we make it, uh, let's get optimistic here. We're gonna call it 6.0.5 because we are gonna move on to staging and production shortly. And we'd like to release an actual build by the end of this. So add version for release, okay. So I told you there were two workflows in here. One is called dev.yaml and the other one is called unsigned. This is my copy of release.yaml that's been hollowed out. And these are the only differences between them here. The dev build and push just builds for any branch except master and the release build and push only builds for tags. So if you push a semver tag um, to git, then you'll get a semver image tag out of GitHub Actions. And if we expand these, you can see exactly what we're doing. And we're checking out the source and we're getting QEMU set up, uh, quick QEMU, so that you can build a multi-arch image. Uh, this is the directive to say, let's get support for many platforms. We're getting Docker build X. It's a popular tool for building Docker images, of course. Uh, GitHub container registry login uses ambient credentials here. Um, so I'm gonna note, for anyone who's never used GitHub Actions before, uh, I didn't have to create a secret for either of these. They're just built in. And then we have this prepare step that's a little bit inscrutable, but it's um, the same in both at least. So what we see here is it's grabbing the branch name and it's trying to determine uh, if that branch is actually a tag. Um, and if it is not a tag, then it gets a timestamp. Uh, because we need to order these images. So if you look at the tags we have here in our package repo, you see there's a branch name, then there's a timestamp, and then there's a git sha. And uh, that is just for Flux to be able to look at the entire list of images and determine which one is the newest. So it's easy to do that with a, a version number. You can put version numbers in order, but with the timestamp, uh, well, it's also easy with the timestamp. It's just not as easy for a human to see, I guess. So here's a build and push step. Uh, again, all this does is it points at a Docker file and it builds and pushes. Um, th there's, you can go and look this action up if you wanna know exactly how that works, but uh, that's not really the scope of this demonstration. And then it pushes another image. So these are just examples that came from the upstream uh, pod info app. I, I would probably build a simpler app if I had time uh, but pod info is a great example. So, um, and the example in release, I don't want to under highlight this here. Um, I don't have much time to look at this, but if you are really using GitHub Actions and if you're doing anything like this, you should really look at this because it has a lot of nice stuff in here, like cosine and um, Helm release. Uh, actually, it will release a Helm chart for you, I think, in here somewhere. 
Um, anyway, I said beyond the scope, uh, we don't have a limited time here, but let's uh, see. Okay, so we pushed and did we get an image out? Yes, we got an image seven minutes ago. We're still waiting for the next one. Yeah, so it's still building. All right, so while we wait for that, we're gonna go ahead and tag the release because I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tag the latest commit on that branch first. I'm gonna give it a release candidate version. Uh, where are we at here? So internally it's called 6.0.5, uh, but we're gonna push an image called 6.0.5-RC1. And if we look at example two, what we'll see is that it's configured slightly differently. Uh, let's jump into example two here. So this is the same example as before. There are a few files that you can ignore because they're not used. Uh, let's look at everything here. So. First, we'll create the secret again. I'm using a multi-tenant configuration here. So as we move from one namespace to the next, we're not reaching across namespaces. We have the secret. Uh, it's very sensitive. It allows us to write to our configuration repo. So um, as, we'll, as we'll see, there are different ways to configure this, uh, but let's get, uh, let's see, go to ex2, okay. Create that secret, just like this to be working when the build is finished. Okay, so we're gonna go back here. Gonna go, all right, I already have the deploy keys open here, sorry. All right, that was it. And we wanna add a new deploy key. Replace this one. Okay. Um, we can look at all of the image policies uh, in all the namespaces with this tool. Let's see if we can make that work. So, all right, so we don't actually have anything installed in example two yet. Let's find out why. Um, I already know why. The answer is there's a place where it's disabled here. Uh, so this is the tenant for each. I said this is multi-tenant, so we have to load each tenant separately. And this is where it comes from. And if we look in there, we'll see There is a, a sync, that's a Git repository and a customization. Uh, it's a, a colloquialism. And what we see is actually it's suspended. We'll see this in all of them. So we're gonna go ahead and unsuspend all of these. Uh, what it means that it's suspended is it's not reconciling, we've turned it off. So that's why we don't see example two in our cluster yet. Nope. I'm going to rebase because I have a commit in front of me. I'm going to push. Let's look at that commit. So that was two minutes ago. We did get a new image pushed uh, in example one. Here we go. And we see that it did actually deploy. Uh, so if we look at our deployment here, we see uh, we've got our new version number. It doesn't say beta anymore. That's great. Okay, so let's go to example two. We don't have any pods here yet. Let's see. 
If we add another K9S, can we look at something different? Uh, I'd like to look into the Flux system namespace and see what we've got going on there. And customizations. All right, so these tenant configs all got to the latest revision, it looks like. Is that the latest revision? Where are we at here? Three, eight, three, seven. Yep, okay, that's the latest revision. Uh, and it is working. Okay, so we've got that error image pull. Remember why, if we look at the uh, deployment, we should see what's wrong in here in our configuration repo. Uh, pod info, example two. All right, we're gonna look at all of these manifests here. This one is not used, it's a patch. Uh, we could patch the deployment this way. Um, this is a customization, also not used. There's an example coming up where we will use this inside of the tenant, but what we have inside of here is just a Git repository that's connected to our read write secret and another patch. Let's get those out of the way. All right. Um, and a Git repository that's connected to our pod info. I'm not sure that we're actually using this. Let's see, is there a reference to it anywhere? Okay, so here's our image policy. And, and what this definition says is uh, effectively deploy any dev image greater than 6.0.0. Uh, it, it can also deploy non-dev images. So we see our deployment did succeed. We have a new image came from, uh, I don't have an ingress, so we can't look at it directly, but we could connect it with a port forward and see uh, it's just going to say the same version number. We're still at 6.0.5. So let's move on to the next step here. So keep it moving. Maybe we get to the end. Okay. Um, so we're going to create a pull request and merge it in this repository, our application. All right. It has recent pushes. Compare and pull request. And this is where we're going to see one of the uh, things from the original example, uh, an end-to-end end -end test that runs. Uh, you can go and look at the content of that if you're interested. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm not sending this to Stefan, sorry. Try again. So when you fork someone else's repository, you have to make sure you don't target their fork if you don't want to. Here is our branch. Here are the actual commits we wanted to see. All right, we've got our new release series. And here's the commit where we added our version number. Create pull request. Okay, this is the one we disabled. That's why it's aired out. That's not a problem. Here's our dev build and push. Here's our release build and push that succeeded in pushing our uh, release candidate image. Um, so now I think uh, all we have left to do is go through and update the manifests. Let's see how many other places say 6.0.4 in this repository and just fix them all. Uh, this is something that it varies depending on your application. This is not something for Flux to handle. Uh, maybe there is a better way to do this, but right now this is a manual step, at least in this CI pipeline.
So you certainly could automate this in the same way that we've done. Um, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm only gonna demonstrate that in the one place where I've already done it. And this will be important later. We'll see why if we get there. All right, super quick. We're gonna merge this without waiting. And then we're gonna get the merged result and tag it. And that's going to kick off another build. Kicked off a lot of builds. So the main thing I want to demo here is Flux. Um, we're showing also GitHub Actions. Uh, I've obviously, I, I work on Flux every day. I don't work on GitHub Actions every day. So I have a little bit more uh, expertise with Flux than GitHub Actions. These are not the best Actions examples. I will concede that. Um, so, all right, we're, we're gonna come back and we'll see that that release actually does go out. Uh, we actually, we need to enable all of the tenants. Like we saw that one tenant is disabled. We need to fix them all the same way. So we can blast through the rest of these examples since they're gonna be fast. They don't have to wait for CI. Uh, and they don't need uh, secrets. They don't need to have a right access to the Git repository because they don't actually write a commit. And we'll see what that means in a minute. Um, See what we have here. Okay, let's look at all namespaces. So we see example three and four and five when they come up hopefully all at once and successfully or with the errors we expected at least. And let's uh, expand this to all namespaces too so we can see the progress by customization and see exactly what we have uh, building this infrastructure out for us. So we have five tenants here. Uh, there's a sixth example. Um, maybe we're running low on time. Uh, let's see. Let's just push the commits we need. Uh, for each of these to be automated and see how they get automated. So in example four, this is a Git repository and the uh, automation is uh, Semver that we're going to use. So instead of a branch uh, or even a tag here, We've got a Semver expression. This one is not smart. It doesn't have any uh, automation in it at all. It just points at a particular Semver release. But you can put um, an expression in here. You can say uh, something slightly more specific. This is to say we like any, uh, I think that means patch or minor release. And then there's another one. You can look those up on semver.org. Um, that is Semver dot org where 
you can understand the whole definition of semantic versioning if you're not familiar, uh, but we've already seen it in action here. And this is a, a final tag here. Uh, so we'd like to deploy from the tagged 6.0.0 release or higher if we see it. So there is no 6.0.0 tag, or at least uh, I don't think there is on our repository, but it should find a newer one and, and uh, use that. We just tagged 6.0.4, that's newer. So what else you can do? If you can publish a Helm chart, uh, which I did not have time for today, unfortunately, but there is a great example in the readme here of how to do this. I suggest you go and check out uh, Stefan Perdon's blog post. I hope this still works. It's a little bit old, but I think that it probably still works. I'll try it later and fix it if it doesn't. So in this example, we have a lot less boilerplate. And this is really what I want to emphasize is there's a lot of moving parts in Flux. You can do it different ways. Um, in this one here, we've got similarly, our Helm release describes a Helm repository to pull from. There's another resource in here that describes the Helm repository. So you can see I got lazy. I didn't set up my own yet here. I'm using Stefan's, but that's OK. You don't always have to set up your own. And here, it, you can see that those are the only two files involved here. There's no um, image update automation. There's no hard moving parts. Um, so we've got a range here to find, and the range doesn't include um, 6.0.4. We're going to make it, uh, let's make it say anything above 6.0. Uh, and actually, Stefan's doesn't have a 6.0.4. So we'll see that one deploys a different version anyway. Uh, it comes from a different source. Uh, but if you wanted to stand up your own Helm repository and publish your own releases of chart uh, pod info, then you could do that. So let's see where our example three landed. Six point zero point five. Looks like it just finished. What we'll see um, that might be interesting is uh, we're not only deploying a new uh, production image here, because staging is also defined to look at SEMVR tags. And 6.0.5 is newer than 6.0.4 beta 2, or 6.0.5 beta 2, whatever we wrote before. Um, so we should see deployment happening soon. Let's see if we got a git commit. Hmm. King, did I just got a comment uh, in the chat and I just wanted to share it. Lorenzo, thank you for that says this Helm release feature, Zember, is exactly what I asked for in a previous meeting talking with you. Really great, thank you. <laughs> awesome, I love to get that kind of feedback, thank you. Uh, so we see things have been happening here. I'm not sure if they're moving as fast as they could. Uh, one of the things I would like to note is we haven't set up any webhook receivers because this is a Rancher desktop. Uh, it doesn't really have a public internet access so there's no way for GitHub to send me a webhook at this address. Um, so some of the things might not have worked. It looks like this example three actually didn't work. I'm not sure what we're waiting for. Maybe we can find out before we're done here. So we've got an image policy that did find the latest image. Uh, image update automation doesn't look like it's run. 
Well, this is example three. That's called stage update. That's wrong. How did that get in here? That should say prod. Well, test your pull request better than I did. <laughs> Ah, looks like we might have been pushed over. I think we pushed this change and then automation hit and wrote over our commit. So that is a risk that you have to be aware of. Let's see what else is wrong. Since we shouldn't see uh, anything called stage in the production namespace. I'm going to delete the ones that I know are empty files that we're not using real quick here. Is Flux CD managed GitOps? That is a great question. Flux CD is uh, built on something called the GitOps toolkit. And it's really, I don't want to say far from managed GitOps because there are solutions built on it that um, are more like a managed GitOps. Flux is more like build your own GitOps. Um, we have some <coughs> product that's in development called Weave GitOps Core that is a little bit more of a managed experience, a little bit more opinionated. Um, if you're interested in building um, something like this, but without making so many decisions yourself, uh, that's one of the use cases of Weave GitOps is to address the decision fatigue of building a system like this, since there are obviously a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, let's see, hope that addressed your question. Okay, so somewhere in here, we have something that does not match. Broad policy, odd info. There we go. That should say prod. And it says prod here. It says prod here. Everyone should push a commit to master that says fix up prod. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> OK. Um, do we have any other questions? I don't see any at the moment. But uh, yeah, let's open it up and see. We have about six minutes left before, we're, before, before we, we leave. So if anyone has any questions, please enter them into the chat. See, this is called can... prod update now. Let's see if it works. All right. I want to get that red off my screen before we stop the recording. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Peter's asking, how do we get the recording? This is pure gold. Yeah, we will definitely have this uh, posted on our YouTube channel. If you signed up uh, using your email, we'll send you an email with the link to that. But I can go ahead and uh, copy and paste the um, the playlist where we add these so that you guys will have that for the future. So let's see if we can poke this and make it work real quick. Give it the namespace and the name of the automation to reconcile. We might just be waiting because the interval is set too long. And uh, like I said, the webhook receivers are a strategy. OK, we skipped that step. That's the problem. I thought we did that. So like I said, examples four and five do not use this requirement. So you don't need. 
uh, secrets, for examples, four and five. And if you want to reuse the same secret for all of them, you can certainly do that. Um, I did not uh, because it's easier for me. Let's see, delete that and replace it. And we Can I should go ahead see... and ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, or... sure. Let's go. Okay. Uh, so Josh is asking any tips uh, of managing multiple clusters with flux slash repos. Uh, would you suggest a separate directory per cluster or a separate repository per cluster? Uh, that is a great question. And we have uh, some good answers in uh, the multi tent. <coughs> sorry, in the end of the get started guide. Here, let me find my links. OK, I put together this list of links for folks who have questions because there is a lot of Flux documentation, and um, it's frankly difficult to get through it all because of all the features. Um, but we're working on making it more accessible all the time. Uh, I recommend everybody start with the core concepts. Um, this is a multiple environment example, uh, Flux Helm Customize example. And if you go to the end of the Get Started guide, you see that one is put alongside of a multiple uh, multi-tenant example. So the multi-environment example also has a multi-cluster component to it. This is the Flux2 Customize Helm example. And I'm looking for the part that says, so in, in the example here, staging and production are different clusters. That may or may not be how you want to organize things. Again, like I said, there's a lot of decisions to make in Flux. Um, but down here somewhere, here is add clusters, identical environments. There is some guidance about how you can set up uh, different. We can we can definitely address those questions if you have them. Feel free to bring them to me. Uh, I'll I'll have those conversations anytime. Um, and but, Kingdon ahead. is on uh, Slack at just Kingdon B, right? Yes, so I'm Kingdon B on Slack. You can mm -hmm. find me. Yeah, and then okay, so we a couple more just before we wrap up here. Um, is this mainly for applications like can can it be used with Terraform infrastructure tool? That's a great question. So Flux image update automation is only for container images. So unless your Terraform configuration, I think Terraform configuration is written in a language called HCL. I don't think you can use Flux to drive uh, Terraform that way. But we do have something else you might be interested in uh, called Tofu Controller. That's a controller that's in development. And it is. Uh, a brand new thing. It's I think it's just coming out, um, being released at this point. Um, and you can use GitOps to drive Terraform too. Um, beware of rough edges. This is not part of Flux itself. This is uh, something that's built on the Flux GitOps toolkit um, with the same methods and the same design and uh, the same people behind it. Um, Chenwit and a uh, uh, few of my other colleagues here, uh, Pieras. And uh, we have some, some great people working on this, Felipe, um, who have all put in a lot of work to bring this out in a very short amount of time. Um, so if you're interested in something like that, I'd love your feedback on that. So <clears throat> thank you for that. We are at the top of the hour, but we do have some more questions in the chat. And if we can just run through them in the next few seconds, uh, sure. I think yeah. that would be great just to wrap it up. Absolutely. Um, so Corin says, I noticed that Flux Bootstrap can overwrite some directories. If the Flux config uh, is pre-existing, can we just do a combo on CLA commands to do our own bootstrap, i.e. kubectl apply dash K on Flux system directory and Flux create secret? You certainly can. Uh, that's documented in the uh, Azure docs for Azure DevOps because uh, bootstrap currently doesn't work with Azure DevOps. So if you want to know about exactly the steps to do that, there is a guide under Azure use cases here um, that explains that pretty well, Flux installation. Uh, so all of the different, yeah, here, this is where you look. I got it. I pasted okay. it in the chat. Great. Thank you. And mm -hmm. then Victor says you can use it with Ansible slash roles using Terraform with it. 
Uh, Lorenzo is also commenting, uh, terrific TF controller. Thank you again, we were struggling due to the reduced capabilities of Crosslink for Azure. This allows us to embrace GitOps for infrastructure even on Azure. Fantastic. Okay, well, we're one minute over. I think we got through everything. So, oh, he says cross plane, sorry. <laughs> got it. <laughs> I should have known that. <laughs> um, great. Do you wanna wrap up with any final thoughts, Kingdon, and then we can close it down? Yeah, um, thanks everyone for coming. I really, uh, I, I couldn't be happier about the way this came out and I really appreciate your time. Uh, feel free to come to me with questions and uh, thanks for using Flux. Yeah, thank you everybody for being here and we'll get the recording posted to the Weave Online User Group playlist. And uh, yeah, we'll email you with that link uh, once we get it up. Thanks so much. Bye everybody. Bye.